Hello everyone, my name's Dane, and in this video we're going to be looking at the infamous bathtub curve. Getting its name from its shape, the bathtub curve is one of the more well-known curves in the field of reliability engineering. It's historically been used to try and understand how likely assets are to fail over their lifetime, and what it's trying to illustrate is that there are three potential, let's call them, phases of an asset's life. The first phase is the early life, characterized by a decreasing or descending probability of failure. Uh, then you move on to the midlife of an asset where the probability of failure is relatively stable. It's, it's the bottom section of the bathtub um, down here. And then we move into the end of life where the probability of failure starts increasing again uh, it, it's typically called end of life or wear out phase uh, of an asset's life cycle. Another term that you might hear when you're looking at the bathtub curve is the term infant mortality. And this comes from the bathtub curve's use in the study of uh, population life cycles, like human life cycles. And infant mortality describes, as it sounds like, um, the increased or above average failure rate. Um, or mortality rate of, of children between kind of when they're born and when they're one or two years old. Um, so this describes the it, infant mortality is, describes the same sort of thing as the early life failures. The bathtub curve is an example of the practice of treating more than one failure type or failure mode using a single classification or an aggregated classification. And so uh, what we see here is actually an aggregate of underlying likelihoods of failure up to a component or an asset level. And what I mean by that is this curve is really the summation or aggregate of three or more um, individual uh, hazard rates or ha hazard functions. And so the first one is um, the early life one described by the, the curve here in orange. Um, for these we're using like Weibull distribution uh, curves, but you know other curves fit this kind of profile as well. We then have a random component uh, described in gray here, and then lastly the end of life or wear out type um, uh, hazard function in yellow. And they all aggregate up to the blue curve or the bathtub curve that you see here. All right, so how does this apply to something like an asset with multiple components? Well, let's take a, a hypothetical asset. Um, we'll give it two components. The first one has two underlying failure modes. And let's say, for example, um, that the first failure mode, we, we can say it's like a, a manufacturing defect issue that, or a, you know, a misalignment issue when, when it's installed. This would be described using an, an infant mortality or early life failure here in orange. Uh, and then potentially it has another failure mode. Let's call it external impact from a third party. Um, and this is pretty unpredictable, so it, we're going to assign it a random distribution here. The second component um, has, let's say, three modes of failure. Two of them are wear out and described in yellow, and again, some sort of uncontrollable um, impact or, or external um, cause of failure. And we're going to describe that again using a random uh, distribution. All right, so now these individual modes of failures can be rolled up to either a component level or an asset level. And if you rolled component number one up to a component level, um, it would have both an infant mortality and random aggregated or stacked on top of each other to represent that component. Uh, similarly, component number two would have the random piece and multiple wear out or end of life modes and they would aggregate up to component level two. If we took that all the way up to an asset level and aggregated everything underneath it, we would get uh, a curve that looks like this. It's very similar to the bathtub curve that we showed before, but because the individual mode distributions are additive, um, the, the scales are a little bit different on this um, the, in, in terms of the way it adds up. All right, so now armed with this knowledge, we can understand why um, not all assets follow the bathtub distribution. Uh, some can be, you know, like the yellow curve, the, 
the gray curve or the orange curve shown on your screen or any combination of um, those uh, individual kind of mode level distributions. So it really depends on um, the modes that you're looking at, the components that are contained within that asset and at what level you're rolling those up to. Um, so keep this in mind when when looking at the bathtub curve and, and really understanding how it's built up and how, it, how it's made. Um, but the important thing is just to understand that um, there are early life failures, kind of mid-life or random failures and uh, end of life or wear out type failure modes. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. Um, if you did, please like, uh, subscribe to the channel. I'll be trying to release more of these videos maybe once a week. And um, if you've got any ideas for future videos, drop them in the comments below. And um, yeah, have a great day.